Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna be revisiting a topic that I've talked about before, but haven't really demonstrated, that is polishing up body hammers to the finish that you should be using them at. This is an old crusty, rusty one that I have. It's gonna be a challenge to get it to where I want it to be. So let's check it out. Now, like I said, this is a pretty decrepit hammer. I got this from my grandfather, some of his tools that was left to me and it is not in good condition by any stretch of the imagination. To my knowledge, it's also not a particularly good brand or anything special. It's on this kind of janky like framing hammer handle on here. It's seen far better days. It may not have been that great when it started its life. I don't know. But with that, we're gonna be cleaning it up to get it to the point where I personally feel it is a usable finish. Now, let me just go ahead and show you right away what it is I'm talking about when I'm talking about a usable finish. Personally, I keep my body hammers cleaned up, dialed up, and polished up all the time. I always want them to have a nice polished finish. The theory here is that however you're striking on the metal, whatever you're doing with metal and you're hammering on it, your hammer is actually imprinting the face of the hammer onto that material. That means if you've got a cut in the face of your hammer, if you've got a nick, if you've got a half moon divot in it from hammering a nail with a body hammer, something like that, it's going to transfer into every piece of metal every time you strike it. Now, when we're doing dent repair or metal finishing, you could be striking a piece of metal a thousand times. That is not gonna turn out well for you if you're striking it over and over and over again with a messed up hammer. Now, part of this process is also I clean up the edges of my hammers. Even the high quality hammers come with a little bit of an edge on them that I don't normally like. I like a rounded, more soft edge to the face of my hammers so that they are a little bit more forgiving when I'm striking material. I've talked about this numerous times in other videos, both reviews of body hammers and also just using hammers but it's a really important thing that you need to hit material as square and clean as you can, but you're not always gonna do that. If you're striking material over and over and over and over again, sometimes you're just not gonna hit perfectly. Now looking at this Harbor Freight body hammer that I reviewed the set for quite some time ago, those hammers have a really rough, hard edge on them. This is not ideal. This means that if you are even slightly off square with them, that edge is gonna bite into your material when you're striking the material. Not what you want from a good body hammer. So you would need to spend a fair amount of time cleaning up those hammers to make them to the point where I would consider them usable. Now conversely, we can take a look at the Ron Covell body hammers from the folks at Trick Tools that I've reviewed as well. They are my current number one recommended body hammer set that is available on the market. Those have a much cleaner edge to them. I would still dress these up a little bit once I get into some bigger projects with them. I will be doing that but they have an overall better finish on the face and the edges than those cheaper Harbor Freight hammers do. As well as the faces on the Ron Covell ones are just superior in design. You need to check out those two reviews if you wanna figure out exactly what I'm talking about. Links in the description down below for more on that. Now here's the Snap-on BF615 reverse curve body hammer. Now this thing, I don't use it a hell heck of a lot, so it's in pretty darn good shape. I polished this thing up, softened up the edges on it, and I got it to the point where I am happy with it for regular use. This is the face that I wanna see on my body hammers at all times. When it's like this, it allows me to create those better polished, clean finishes. The less work I'm creating for myself by imprinting weird patterns in the metal, the less I have to finish up later in the metal finishing process. Now that you have a concept of what I'm aiming for, let's take this pretty nasty and ugly body hammer that I have here and go ahead and clean it up, get it to a point where I would actually consider using it. I don't have any intention of putting this into my rotation or putting a nice handle on it. And Maybe eventually I will, but more than likely I'll just put it on the shelf. As it was my grandfather's, he's passed on now. He meant a lot to me, so I'd like to just have this around. With that, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using primarily the DA, the dual action or orbital sander to clean this thing up. Now, if this hammer was in far worse shape than it currently is, I might actually consider taking it to the belt sander and really clean up the rough finish with the belt sander. You can take a look at this Martin hammer here. This has what I would consider a pretty rough face on it right now. The reason for that is this is the hammer that I use for knocking out dents in heavier materials. If I'm working with some eighth inch steel or some cast pieces that need to be bent back into shape, maybe a frame rail that's got a dent in it, this is the hammer that I reach for when I'm working with that kind of stuff. So it definitely has a far worse finish on it than most of my hammers do. So that is a rough hammer in my opinion. And I would take that to the belt sander before I took it to the DA sander to start this process. But this rough one I have here is okay. I think we'll be all right starting off with the DA on this one. 
Overall, this is a really pretty simple process. All we have to do is attack this thing with a DA. I'll hit it first with the 80 grit DA, just to see rough on the face what I'm working with here. As you can see here, this face is actually a little worse than I thought it was. It's got two really low spots that are gonna be a bit of trouble for me on this overall finish job. I'm gonna use the 80 grit to get the surface overall to the same level. I wanna get everything knocked down to the same point. Now, normally when I'm working with a quality body hammer, this isn't really something I have to do. I just need to kind of knock off the roughness of maybe the belt sander marks on there and then clean up the edges of the thing to round off the edges. With this hammer, as I'm restoring an older hammer that's pretty beat up and probably wasn't particularly good to begin with, this has a pretty bad face that I'm gonna have to work on a little bit extra. From the 80 grit, I'm gonna step up to 180, 220, 320, and then finally up to 400 grit just to get this to a nice uniform finish. An important thing to note here, while you're sanding the face of this hammer, it's really important that you keep that DA pretty perpendicular to the face of that hammer. If you're going at an angle, you're gonna end up with an angled face to your hammerhead. You need to try and maintain the shape of the existing hammer face without destroying that too much. You're just looking to put a good finish on the existing face that's already there. For the edges of this thing, as I said, I wanna clean those up. I wanna knock those down. So what am I gonna do here? Well, you'll see me as I'm going here, actually rounding my way around that thing, kind of flowing around it. And that's me kind of putting maybe a 45-ish angle on that corner to start the way I want it to round over. And then I'll come back and actually give it more of a rounding shape. To do this rounding shape, I literally just work my way around the hammer, slowly rotating the hammer, holding the DA in one position, and rotating the DA around that center of that hammer head to create that rounded finish. I just want to keep slowly working my way around this hammer head, doing that and never really changing the pace at which I'm rounding that edge so I keep it fairly uniform. Now you can see here the 400 finish is actually pretty darn good right as it is. I'm going to go from a 400 right to a polishing step. I would often go to a 600 or even up into the 1000 and above grits to get this just how I want it. If I was working with aluminum especially, where I'm really worried about everything being good polished finish, I would do that. To polish this, I'm going to use this Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Normally at my day job, I would go to the buffer, the stand mounted buffer, and I would actually use like a stainless steel polishing bar and I would really buff this thing to a nice near finish, that would be the ideal way to do that. Unfortunately, here in my shop space, I don't have a stand mount of buffer right now. The hand polishing will do a pretty decent job of showing you what I'm aiming for here. And that is the end result, the polished up face of this hammer. You can see here, compared to the original, this thing is so much nicer. It's gonna provide a much superior hammering face on this hammer. The nice thing when you buy a quality hammer set like these Covell ones is the face is already really good. It's nothing like this ratty hammer was, so it's not nearly as much work to get these to a polished finish as it was doing this rough restoration of this hammer here. The last note I can really make about doing this is I highly recommend when you're not using your body hammers, like lately I've been doing wiring work, I haven't been using my hammers much at all. So I highly recommend wiping them down with a little bit of oil, some coating on there to keep them from rusting. I find that Gibbs oil is a pretty darn good oil for this. It doesn't evaporate like some other ones do. It stays on there nice and it keeps a nice rust preventative layer on there. The next time you go to use your hammers, it's really simple. You just grab some lacquer thinner, some wax and grease remover and wipe down your hammers. Remove that oil from the face of them so you're not transferring that to the materials that you're working with. That's gonna wrap it up for this video, folks. I threw some links in the description down below, the Covell body hammers and that Gibbs oil for keeping your hammers in a clean state. Threw that in the description down below so you can check those links out if you want to. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like, it really helps out. Let me know in the comments down below, do you keep your hammers in really good shape? Do you keep them that highly polished finish all the time? Let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hippie that directly supports this channel and subscribe to keep up to date with all the content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.